Hi, and welcome back to another edition of the Fuji Guys. My name is Billy. Today, we're going to take a look at the Fujifilm FinePix S9900W. Uh, this video also applies to the S9800 because both of the cameras are exactly the same. The only difference between this versus the 9800, of course, is that the W denotes the Wi-Fi capabilities of this camera. That means that you can transfer images directly from your camera onto a smart device that's running iOS or Android using the uh, free Fujifilm app, as well as to remotely control the camera from your smart device. Again, downloading it through your iOS or Android device, you can download the Fujifilm um, remote app, connect it directly to this camera, and see a live view of what you're shooting. So this is really the major difference, but again, the features are exactly the same. So I'm going to step you through the 9800 today. Uh, 9900, sorry, and show you some of the features that are common on both cameras, and of course, show you, show you the Wi Fi features of the 9900W itself. First off, this is Fuji's S series camera, so it's basically what's called a bridge camera. What that means is that the lens itself is actually built and attached onto the camera body, and so it's not interchangeable, it's not removable like a DSLR or a compact system camera. Uh, the major advantages of having this style camera, of course, is the size, because this camera offers a 50 times optical zoom lens. It basically starts from 24 millimeters and goes all the way up to 1200 millimeters. So, you know, for, 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 for that same lens on a DSLR, it would be quite, quite large. And even a compact system camera with that type of lens, it will still be very large. And one of the things about this camera, why it's so small compared to, say, a DSLR and a CSC that offers this type of zoom, is because the sensor itself is actually not that large either. So it's the same sensor size found on most point-and-shoot cameras. It's 1 and 2.3 inch in terms of di diagonal size. And so, you know, it's not going to be amazing for low-light shooting uh, like a DSLR or a camera that has an APS-C size sensor on it. However, there's no camera like that can, that can get you this close, you know, without all the weight. And so that's where the benefits of this S-series style camera comes into play today. It offers a 16 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor, so it is pretty good for low light, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it for this style of camera. This is a camera that you, of course, would travel with, whether you're into wildlife photography and you really want to get close to the action. Like I said, again, in terms of size and weight, there's nothing like this that can get that close in terms of an interchangeable camera system. So this is why a lot of people actually, uh, you know, look at a bridge-style camera like this, and it, it really has its place in, in photography. Again, if you don't want to lug the size, this is the style that you should look for uh, in today's, uh, you know, camera equipment. So both the S9900W as well as the 9800 offers a 50 times optical zoom lens. It starts off at 24 millimeters and it travels all the way up to about 1200 millimeters. And as you can see, this is the full extent of the zoom itself. You can zoom with the controls either on the top of the camera here, or there's also a side lever that allows you to zoom in and zoom out. You can also customize that, sl uh, that side lever if you want to uh, have the zoom very fast or you can have the zoom uh, slower so that, you know, let's say you're doing videos, it might be better to have a slower zoom than when you want to do photography, you can use the top to really zoom in and zoom back out. So again, this is a style of a camera that gives you extremely long zoom. Um, some of the pictures that you can see really, a, a regular point and shoot, a cell phone, and even a DSLR can't reach this without having a huge lens attached to it. So, you know, this makes it a perfect camera if you want to go um, traveling and you don't want to carry a lot of weight and giving you that reach. Um, the lens is image stabilized, so it really helps with uh, getting steadier shots. In addition to that, this camera does offer, you know, HD video, full HD video. And it also offers sort of a five axis image stabilization for the video, you know, and you really need it with this style camera, especially it reaching up to 1200 millimeters. So again, this is some of the cool features that, uh, you know, the 9900 as well as the 9800 does offer for you. When looking at these style cameras, the S series style cameras that are, you know, offering a long zoom, uh, normally you would use the back of the LCD screen to sort of, uh, you know, compose your shots. The great thing about this Fuji cam, of course, is that it does offer as well, uh, in addition to the LCD, an electronic viewfinder. It's about a 920K, so it does have really good resolution. And shooting in bright sunlight it is much, much easier to, to take pictures with. 
In addition to that, you know, when you actually hold the camera, instead of looking back on the back of the LCD screen, you're looking through the uh, EVF on the top here, it's much easier to hold. If your elbows are in, you're much more steadier. And it's very simple. You can actually push the button on the back here, the EVF LCD button to jump between the LCD screen or the EVF. So you can select uh, whichever one you want to use. Um, whether it's the EVF or at the bottom LCD. Just to note though, of course, the LCD screen is going to eat up a little bit more battery life. So, you know, if you want to conserve batteries, the EVF is probably the better way to go. And for a camera like this with this much zoom, you know, I always highly recommend you use, use the EVF if it is available to you. Now this camera is fully featured. It does offer things like the ability to control shutter speeds and aperture. Of course, to tell you the truth, um, with the sensor size on this camera, changing the aperture is going to be very difficult in the sense that it's very hard to pull things out of focus. And one of the tricks, of course, with a long zoom camera that has a small sensor is to actually zoom in on the subject. And that's going to help you, of course, uh, you know, isolate the, the, the background from the subject or the subject from the background. Um, in, a, in addition to that, there's a lot of other shooting modes other than controlling aperture and shutter speeds. There's actually a fully automatic mode called SLR Auto that determines the scene. It determines if there's subjects in the shot. Uh, if it's backlit and it will actually uh, fire the flash if it needs to. Again, you have a built-in flash on top of this camera as well. Uh, there's also high-speed shooting modes uh, that this camera can offer, as well as I mentioned earlier, full HD video. In the video recording, um, you know, you can also take photos during the video. So on the back of the camera, when you start to, to record the videos, you can still push the shutter button and it will actually capture images as, as well as record video so it's uninterrupted. So that's kind of a nice uh, feature to have with this camera. It does run off uh, four AA batteries. So, um, you know, this style of camera, if you are traveling, it's make, it makes it a lot easier to pick up in a corner store if you do forget to, to uh, charge your batteries. Of course, you can always pick up rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries nowadays that are very inexpensive if you want to recharge the batteries. But you also have the capabilities, like I said, having AA batteries. If you're in a, in a country that uh, may not carry a certain battery, I can pretty much guarantee that everywhere carries AA batteries. So it's a great system to have. Um, there's also, you know, an interval timer feature. So if you do like time-lapse photography, you can set it up to, sh to shoot uh, multiple shots uh, at a, a set amount of time. And later on, you can actually download a, a great program that you can stick all the images together to create a nice video. Uh, there's a lot of programs out there on the internet. You can just Google, Google that, and, and uh, it can help you create, uh, you know, from your still shots uh, through the interval timer, a nice time lapse video. So that's a great feature to have. There's also things like panoramic mode that allows you to shoot, uh, you know, panoramic as well as, of course, you know, advanced filter features. Things like isolating the a color from the from the whole scene. So, if you're in a pumpkin patch, you want to isolate the pumpkins from the background and have everything kind of monochrome. Uh, you can do that by selecting the partial colors for orange. There's also even a toy camera feature that sort of gives you a vignetting effect that makes it very old school looking. Um, and also, there's a new feature called the sketch uh, filter, which you know, similar to some of the programs, of course, you can download on the internet to do your existing images, but it does it right on the camera. It kind of gives you sort of an artistic sketch of the actual scene that you're capturing, sort of a, versus a real life picture. And uh, again, that's just a nice feature to play with. Is it the, a feature that, you know, you should be picking up this camera? Probably not, but it's again, a nice feature to have. Um, Lastly, of course, uh, this camera does offer um, a great capabilities of shooting, you know, again, like I said, high speed modes. Uh, you can set it up where it fires a bunch of shots. There's a dedicated button on the top of this camera that you toggle between, you know, single shot and continuous high speed shooting. So if you want to shoot fast action shots, you can just hold the shutter button down and it'll just fire a bunch of burst shots and uh, makes it much easier to capture any action. So. Both of the cameras have some great features. Both the 9800 and 9900W are basically, like I said, exactly the same. The major difference with the 9900W is, of course, the Wi-Fi capabilities. So let's just talk about the Wi-Fi capabilities quickly on this camera. Um, down, when you download the program through your iOS or Android device, you want to look for the camera remote app. From that app, you can actually configure the camera to connect directly to your smart device. And first off, you can easily transfer images from your camera onto your smart device. You can browse 
from your smart device, uh, images that are found on the camera. Uh, you can also control the camera from your smart device, so it does give you a live view. You can zoom in, zoom out remotely, and you have the camera, whether you, know, you have it on a tripod, you can control that. You can release the shutter, you can change other settings, including things like self-timer. Uh, just some of the few things that you can do and just makes the camera really a, a fully fledged uh, you know, camera for shooting you know, with family as well if you want to get into the shot. It's quite useful for that. And because it uses Wi-Fi, um, you connect directly to it. You don't need to connect to any other device. It, the, the, the cam itself creates sort of a, a hot spot where you know, um, your smart device would connect to it and then you would control from that. So again, you, you want to make sure that you download the camera remote app in order to control as well as browse and transfer images uh, from this camera. In addition to the Wi-Fi capabilities, you can set it up to do a PC auto save, which automatically will connect to your Wi-Fi network at home and start transferring images from the camera onto your computer. If you want to configure that, you can obviously do that. So uh, the 9900W as well as the 9800 are great little bridge style cameras. Like I said, again, it's not going to take better pictures than, say, a DSLR or a large sensor camera would, would, but it's much smaller and it's going to give you a much closer reach than any DSLR would without the size and weight that you'd have to deal with. So if you are looking at picking up this camera to get close-up action shots, wildlife photography, and everyday photography, uh, this camera might be a good starter camera for you to, to, ha to go with. And if you're really into ph photography and you understand that you need a larger sensor with better low light capabilities. This may not be the camera for you. However, like I said again, there's no cameras out there that can actually have that reach, okay? So if you want to learn more about this camera, I recommend you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter. Until then, I'm Billy of the Fuji Guys.